everybody, my name is Jamie and I am the Board Game Man. But today we're not going to look at a board game, we're going to look at a card game back from 1998 where heads are going to roll. Okay, not literally. But it is the card game called Guillotine by Wizard Games. It's two to five players. The object of the game is you're trying to get as many points as you can. And how you do that is every day, 12 nobles get in line for the guillotine. <laughs> And uh, let me show you one of them here, because this is actually a brand new set. These are still in the wrapping, so I haven't opened them yet. But here's Marie Antoinette, and you can see, look at the artwork on this. Really great. And you can see she's worth five points. So every noble has a point value on the bottom. Some actually have negative points, so you got to watch out for that. But there are action cards that come into play. And what these do is they maneuver the nobles in line. So in case the next noble in line is like a negative two, you don't want to get the negative two noble. So hopefully you have something in your action cards that can move that guy back in the line and move someone maybe that has positive points in the front of the line. So for instance, this one here in the back, this has Marie Antoinette again. It says, if Marie Antoinette is in line, move her to the front of the line. So this is probably one of the best cards you can get because I believe she is the most points with five points. So that's an example of one of the action cards in the deck. So. Um, like I said, you go through three days, there's 12 nobles in line, so it makes for a real fun game. So let's head on over to the gamer's table, and let's start getting some heads rolling! Welcome to the gamer's table. Uh, this is pretty much it when it comes to components. Very, very quick and simple. Uh, not much to it. You have the instruction booklet here, which is really well written. Uh, you'll definitely understand it when you read it. Um, it only takes a few minutes to read, and it's very, very simple. You have two different decks of cards. You have these, which are the noble cards. These are all the different nobles that are in the game and whatnot. And you'll pay attention that there is different colors. So you see we got green, purple, blue, brown, and so on. So you'll see there's different colors as well. And there's, there's some action cards, which are here, that sometimes come into play with it when it comes to the color of the noble. Then you also have some nobles that only have the point value, and that's it. So if you grab this one, you get three points. You get the royal cartographer, you get one point, and so on. But there are some that have some actions that go along with them. So, for instance, the innocent victim, what happens is if you end up picking him up, which is negative one points, because there are some negative points in here as well, this one says choose an action card from your hand and discard it after you collect this noble. noble. So that's one uh, that maybe you have a bad action hat, you know, maybe it, you know you get minus two for each certain noble or something, you might want to get discard a card like that. So that's that one. And then you have the lord, uh, you have two points for him. And this one says, draw an additional action card at the end of your turn after you collect this noble. So that's actually not a bad one at all. I'll show you a couple more. Here's the Countess. Now this is an interesting one. You get two points for her, but it says the Countess is worth plus two points if you also have the Count in your score pile. So if you have the Count, which is right here, he says the same thing on the bottom except you need the Countess. So they'll, they'll actually be worth four points each if you end up getting both of these in your stack. So you definitely want to, if you see both of them in line uh, to be beheaded, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you get both of them. But the thing is, the other players, when you receive the Noble, which I'll show you in a moment how you do this, you'll have them face up in front of you. So when they see you have this and they see the count is in there, as long as they know if you get both of these, you get bonus points, the other players might try to get this card to keep you from getting those points. So... But anyway, that's, uh, that goes with that. Then you have, I'll show, I'll show you one more. Here's the general. He's worth four points. And it says, add another noble from the noble deck to the end of the line after you collect this noble. So there's all sorts of different actions that go with these noble cards. So I just want to show you a few of those. Then you have the action cards. These are the white backs. See, these are like a brown back, and then these are the white backs. And you can see they have all sorts of, all sorts of different action cards in here. In fact, I believe there is 50 uh, nobles in the deck, and there's 60 action cards in the deck. It is a two-to-five player game. Um, 
But let me show you a couple of these. <clears throat> Excuse me. You got the clerical error. It says, choose a player, collect any noble of your choice from that player's score pile. That player then chooses any other noble from your score pile and collects it. So that's an interesting card. Um, we have another one here. Choose any noble in line and discard it. Replace it with the top noble from the noble deck. So you have all sorts of different kinds that are here. Majesty, move a purple noble forward up two places in the line. So that's what I was telling you earlier about the color of the nobles. Those will come into play as well. And here's noble, uh, another one. Move a noble forward exactly three places in line. So you say, you know, say you have a, you know, three, four, five point noble that's three spots away. And it's your turn. You can play this card, puts them to the front. And guess what? You get that card. So there's all sorts of cool little action cards in here. And, let me, and then you have the guillotine. Here is the guillotine. And how you set it up, it actually stands up. What you do is you pretty much punch this out as a stand. This comes out like so. Let me see if I can get this other part. This was brand new when I opened it, so it hasn't even been used yet. And what you do is you just hook it on just like that. Whoops. Woo. Hook it on. There we go. Like so. And it actually stands up like that. <laughs> it's really cool. So you're going to put the guillotine over here. And what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and show you just a couple little rounds here. And what you do is you're going to start off the game with 12 nobles in a row. That is considered a day. You're going to play three rounds or three days. And whoever has the most points after three days wins the game. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up the guillotine here. We're going to put this all the way over here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do it from this side. That way I can grab it easy. So you got the guillotine over here. These are the action cards I'll put over here. Now you're going to deal out 12 noble cards. So you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm running out of room here. 11 and 12. There we go. Okay. So you start off the day game with 12 nobles. Then each player is going to start off with five action cards. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five for player one, and one, two, three, four, five for player two. Then you put the deck right here, and you're going to put the other nobles right here nearby. And then you decide who goes first. Now there is three steps, but there might be only two. But at the beginning of your turn, you want to look at your five action cards, and you can decide to play one. But you do not have to if you don't want to. If you're satisfied with the person in the front here, then you're good to go. But they're also well, you want to also want to make sure that you read your action cards because you might have a big number here, but you might have an action where you can actually move someone up over here and then do the action card. That way you can get two cards for one and you can do better. So, so let's see what we got here. The first player has Rush Job, Lit Idiot, Pushed, and then a couple Fountain of Bloods here. So, let's see, it says, uh, let's see, this one says, choose a player. That player cannot play an action card on his or her next turn. That's actually a pretty decent one. Um, now, here's one, L idiot, move a noble forward up two places in line. Well, in this card right now, I don't want to use that because this is the, let's see, what is it, two places, move a noble forward two places in line. So, I can use any of these nobles to put, put two players in line, but the thing is, these are all negative here, so I don't want to move any of these towards the front of the line. I actually have some positives here and some positives here. But all the negatives are all together right here, so I don't want to move those two spots. Uh, same thing with that one. Put this card in front of you. It is worth two points. Well, there you go. Just st pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and use this card. So I get two points automatically, and I get to take the first noble that's next to the guillotine. So he is now beheaded. And at the end of the game, I'll have these extra two points that I get for this card. So I'm going to put this over here. And I also get one point for the sheriff. And then what you do is you're going to take an action card. And then your game is, or your turn is done. Now, even if you do not use an action card at the beginning of your turn, say you just went right after the, the first player or the first noble in the thing, at the end of your turn, after you choose a noble, you still get to draw an action card no matter what. So at the end of every turn, you're going to draw a, an action card, whether you use it or not. So since I'm out of room at the end there, I'm going to go ahead and slide these guys over. Usually you won't have to do that, but since my table is only so long, put the sheriff right over here. 
and so on. We'll put Lady Waiting right there. Now we have room for all the rest of the 11 here. So now player two is going to look at their cards. And you got the opinionated guards, political influence, the long walk, pushed, and rat break. So this one says, rearrange the first four nobles in line any way you wish. Well, it does, I don't think it really matters here. We got a one, negative one, negative one, negative three, negative two, so I'm not going to use that card. Draw three additional action cards at the end of your turn. Do not collect a noble this turn. So you also have this card. The long walk. Reverse the order of the line. Now, this is a big one here. If you want to use this, what happens is the guillotine actually gets put on the other side, and that's where those players start to be put. So you know what? I think I might actually do that. So what I'll do is I'm going to say I use this card, this action card here. What you can do is you can take the guillotine. Let's push these over this way since I don't have the room here. And now the guillotine is on this side. So now we're going to start taking it from this side. So that's interesting. So now you see you reverse the order of the line. So this goes into a discard pile. And now you get to choose a noble. He's going to choose Lady in Waiting. So he went ahead and I got, he got this. And now player two gets one point. Now, honestly, I would probably would have probably used that uh, the next turn because I would have got one point for this one. And then the next turn, the next player would have had to deal with the negatives. But I just want to show you how that worked and, and so on. But so I wasn't really serious with playing it. And then, they, obviously, you, you pick up an action card at the end of your turn. So you don't want to forget to do that. Then player one is going to go back over here and say, okay, what do I want to play here? Put move a noble forward exactly two places. I don't know if I really want to use any of these because moving two and three places, it, it's going to give me a negative point. So I'm not going to play any of these action cards. I'm just going to take, oh, I'm sorry, I'm over here. Yikes, i got to remember that. So hold your horses here. Actually, pushed might be a very good one for me now, because now that the guillotine's over there, player two actually gave me a, a nice uh, boost here. Move a noble forward exactly two places in line. Well, guess who's this? King Louis the Sixteenth, which is five points. So, you, heck yeah, I want to do that. So, I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. And King Louis the Sixteenth is right in front. So, this is now taken out. And guess what? I get five points for King Louis the Sixteenth. Boom. And then I pick up an action card. I don't want to forget to do that. So that was actually a really dumb move for player two to do that because all of a sudden I had I was able to put him two places in line. I got him. Okay. Player two is going to look and see what he has. This actually might help for him too. Let's see. Let's go with, I'm going to go with move a, mo a noble forward exactly two places in line. That will actually help me out in this as well for player two. So he's going to do the same thing. He's going to move the colonel up front who is worth more points. And he takes the three points for player two. So player two picks up that. And he's going to pick up an action card. And so on. So that's pretty much how the game works. You're going to go back and forth. You're going to decide whether you want to use an action card or not. You don't have to if you don't want to, if the lineup's already the way you want it. Um, the day ends in one of two ways. When all the nobles have been beheaded, the game is, I mean, uh, the round is over, or there is a certain card in the deck that says, as soon as you pick up this noble, the day is done. So there is a noble in there that, that does say that. I don't remember which one it was. But it does say, once you pick up, and it says right in the action, if you pick up this noble, the day is done. There's also some in here that have actually have you add two nobles to the, the line. Or there's action cards that say, you're going to take two nobles from the line and discard them. So, that I mean, that's just... So it doesn't always mean if you go all 12, that the, you know, it just ends like that. There are some other cards in there. But there it is, my friends. You pretty much do this three times. You go back and forth using your action cards, not using your action cards, picking up a noble, and then drawing an action card. And the first person to have the... Actually, the person that has the most points at the end of three days wins the game.